now I'm just regularly nonplussed. By George, that's it. I'll write it out a dozen different ways and I'll send the one that looks the best. All right, Jack, here we are. In love with the dearest girl on earth. Tackle her like a man and tell her so. Oh, they'll be off north and you'll be gone down and you've lost your chance forever. She's my fate. And I'm hanged if I shan't be here. So, here goes. Uh, my darling. Rather strong, perhaps, to begin with. Uh. Um, my, my dear Miss Verdon, no, no, too formal, and a lot of all how I feel. Uh, uh, my dear, oh, my dear, oh, hang it, my dear Kitty, oh, that's grand. <laughs> Now I can go ahead like a house on fire. My dear Kitty. Beg pardon, sir, but would you mind if uh, I... Yes, I'm very busy. Yes, sir, but I, I have to... I'm busy with the most important affair. Go away. Yes, sir. Just as I had such a good start. Uh, oh, yes, sir. My dear Kitty. Brassett, what are you doing? What do you want? I merely wish to say, sir, I, I, I've laid out yes, some things... Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. ...which I felt you would not care to take. Oh, take them! Take every blessed rag I've got, only leave me alone! Yes, sir. My dear Kitty... Beg pardon, sir? I wasn't addressing you, Brassett. <laughs> My dear Kitty... I say, if you don't clear out, I... Oh, it's you, Charlie. <laughs> what is it, old chap? Nothing, Jack. I won't bother you if you're busy. Oh, no, no, no. It's that fool Brassett. What's he doing? Only bagging all my things and worrying me like old Harry. Well, I'm trying to write a most important letter. <laughs> well, but don't mind me today. I'm nervous and nagging and not fussed. Well, so am I, Jack. Why? Well, I've been trying to write a letter to... Oh, really? A letter to whom? To... To Miss Spedigue. Well, how far have you got? I began awfully well, but I didn't want to be too formal, and I didn't like to be too... Distant? Well? So I just said, my dear Amy, and then words failed me. Oh, so I come to you for advice. You always know what to do and say. Do I? You know my idiotic complaint. I'm shy. You're not. Aren't I? Oh, so prescribe your chap. What am I to say? Good idea. I'll prescribe for him and take the medicine myself. All right. Uh, now, you're in love with Amy Spedicue, and you want to know if there's any well, hope for you. Well, you see, we're all after uh, scholars more. Yes, I know. And you want to see her at once. When and where. Better wait. Do I diagnose the case after it? To a tea, old chap. All right. You're going to want to write something to the effect of this. Um, my dear Kitty. No, not Kitty. Amy. Oh, yes, of course. What was I thinking? Um, my dear Amy. Uh, forgive me for thus addressing you, but I love you so deeply. Underline. Rather strong, Jack. So earnestly. Also, underline. Oh, I say. That I must write to tell you so. Well, you see, there's only one obstacle to me putting it quite as straight as that. As much as I'd like to. What's that? Well, I'm an aunt. Well, most of us have. What does that have to do with anything? Well... I thought I ought to tell her first. If you're going to drag your aunt into the business, you might as well wait till they get back from Scotland. Why? Do you know how aunt is when she gets involved? No, I don't. That's just it. I don't know her. I've never even seen her. Well, then we won't be too hard on that aunt. She hasn't interfered with the affairs up to now. No, except to come to find out that I'm an orphan and was sent to Eden and to Oxford. And now my guardian writes to me that she's coming this morning by an early train and will turn to luncheon with me at one o'clock. And you've never met her? No. She went out to Brazil before I was born and became a sort of secretary to a rich old Brazilian chap out there called Dom Pedro de Alvadores. And now, by the merest chance in the world, I've seen this. Uh, Madam, or rather, Dona Lucia de Alvadores, a Brazilian millionaire, has taken over Lord Tarbaby's mansion in Belgravia. An English woman of genial disposition and a financial genius. Indeed, it was her capacity in this direction that earned her the gratitude of her late husband and led to a romantic deathbed marriage. Well, I don't see much in that. Go on, Jack. Read the next. Uh, her only relation is a nephew at Oxford. A lucky nephew. That's me. 
And George Charlie, this is a startler, and you say she may be here any minute. I've made every train up till now. We shall arrive at the next just in time for lunch. I know, it's a bore, and I wanted to write that letter to Amy. Well, I don't know so much about that. It's awfully difficult letter writing. Fearfully complicated. Why? Well, I have no people or anything. No people? With an aunt like that? I have no reason to expect anything from her, more than she's already done for me, for which, of course, I'm grateful and all that. But I wanted to meet Amy. I thought you were a good idea, Charlie. Really, Jack? You write it down. I'll copy it down. Oh, no, not for you, for me. Oh, for both of us. You're gone on Amy, and I'm in love with Kitty. Really, Jack? Oh, madly. Worse than anything I've ever taken up. Even cricket. I was writing to tell her so when you came in. There's the letter. I'm so glad. What's your idea? No, pain that's writing. We'll have a luncheon party for your aunt, and then tea afterwards in the garden. In the garden? Oh, yes, sir. I'll give you. Oh, but my room is so small. Oh, never mind. I'll lend you mine. Oh. Brasset shall see to it. Brasset! And now, come on, first we'll ask the girls. Ask the girls? To meet your aunt. But what about old Spedigue? Blow old Spedigue. Oh, I forgot. He's in town for a few days on business. Even better. Brasset. Do you think they'll come? Oh, yes, they'll jump back. What makes you think so? Well, what do you think? Well, you know, Jack, I rather agree with you. All right, we'll make a note if you want. Go ahead, write it out. Uh, my dear Miss Spedigue. Brasset! Brasset, where are you? Brasset! Here, sir. No, oh, I'll get someone to take a note to Mrs. Spedigue's what? Yes, sir. Yes, Jack, I've got all that. All right, um, would you and Miss Burden do me the honor to lunch honor. with me and Mr. Chester? Mr. Chester. I'll address the envelope. I'll address Oh, no, 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 that's your muff. <laughs> At St. Old's College, in one o'clock. One o'clock. Oh, no. Miss Spedigue. Miss Oh, no, you out. To meet my aunt, uh, what did you say her name was, Charlie? Uh, Donna Lucia de Alvadores. All right, uh, Donna, stick it down. Answer by bearer will greatly be obliged. Sincerely, Charles Wycombe. Jack, you're a genius. It's a glorious opportunity. They'll be off to Scotland. And we're off down. And we shall have them all to ourselves. The messenger, sir. Oh, give him that and tell him to look sharp. Yes, sir. Yes, this sort of thing isn't to be handled by correspondence. No, and we'll have them all to ourselves. Yes, and we couldn't have asked them had it not been for that dear old aunt of yours. I'm beginning to love that lady already. <laughs> oh, Brasset! Brasset! Sir? Um, set lunch for five. For how many, sir? For five. For five, sir? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, sir, I I'm afraid our credit in the kitchen is somewhat exhausted, sir. Oh, is it? Uh, yes, sir. How are you off the tick, Charlie? Oh, my guardian's rather... Uh... Oh, is he? Uh, never mind. Go to Bunters. Seek outside. Oh, I'm afraid, sir. We owe Bunters. Oh, do we? Yes, uh... sir. Oh, Charlie! You know, oh, it'll be all right once my check comes. Here, Brassie, see what you can get with that. Oh, this is no good, sir. I, I couldn't get anything on this. However, I have no doubt it will be all right at Bunters. If I say it's for me. All right, uh, just lunch for five for one. Short notice, sir. Well, long pay, hey, go where you like, do what you like, just lunch for five at one. Yes, sir. I so see, I... Jack, that's my watch. Oh, <laughs> beg your pardon, what was it? What wine, sir? Oh, champagne. Very little left, sir. Half a dozen bottles. Oh, oh no, sir. Oh, only four, I think. Oh, quite enough. Six, I'll swear. No, I beg your pardon, sir. Only four of champagne, and uh, I did get one of claret. Oh, hang your claret. It's been open a month already. He sneaked those other two bottles, you know. He's a cock. Well, my fellow's just the same. Oh, they all are. Well, while you're showing your art the chapel in the cloisters, Kitty and I can have a little talk. Oh, that's very good, Jack. But what about Amy and me and our little chat? She'll be in our way, horribly. Well, I never thought of that. She's very good as an excuse to get the girls to come, but by herself, she'll be an awful bore. She'd be a worse than that. She'd be a brute of a nuisance. Well, what shall we do? Well, Napoleon went over the Alps by horseback, and I went under there by train, so there's got to be a way around this. But how? Well, couldn't we get someone to meet her? Oh, yes, someone that we can depend on. But whom? Brassett, we can have him do it. He's a pompous sort of chap, and as awful as a culture. Yes, that's a good idea, Jack. But I don't quite think that's going to work. Oh, no, no, no. We should want him to wait on our table. Yes, of course. So we shall. Oh, there's Freddie Peel. Oh, he's such a cynical chap. Oh, he neglects your arms. I think you want to make love to our girls. By George, that's it. Babs, 
funny bag will hug him to it. Cole, why didn't we think that we were four? He's a jolly smart chap and will keep your aunt in a rattling good humour. Uh, Brassin! Sir? Go to Lord Bancourt Abney's rooms and send him our compliments and tell him to meet us here at once. Yes, sir. Uh, and tell him it's very important. <coughs> yes, sir. Oh, yes, and very immediate. Yes, sir. And while the back is doing you stir with your aunt, we can have a chat with the girls. By the by, Jack. Have you noticed something about Babs lately? Ever since he was so ill and went off to the Mediterranean? Yeah, I've noticed he's jolly hard up. I fancy from a few hints he's dropped me, he's a little hard hit himself. What? That's in love? Yes, and if I'm not much mistaken, he's a soft hearted over girl. Yes, we are! All the better! He'll be here for us! He'll see the necessity of keeping your aunt well out of the way. By George Jack, he'll be Prime Minister one of these days. <laughs> His lordship's compliments, sir. He says he can't come. He has a luncheon party, and uh, could you lend him a few bottles of champagne? Lend him a few bottles of champagne? Yes, sir. Well, of all the cheap, who's coming? Well, probably Freddie Peel and a whole lot of idiots like himself. They'll be howling comic songs all afternoon. Oh, yes, it'll sound awfully bad, won't it? <laughs> Master, <laughs> I'll grab it late for six. Hmm. Oh, what shall we do? Well, we must make him come to us. We must let him ruin our plans in such a selfish way. Uh, Brass, tidy up my room up. Put the champagne on ice. Yes, sir. Come on, Charlie, come on. Sir. One o'clock. Hurry, scurry, no time for anything. They come with a bang. They go with a bang. They do everything.